Hello everybody and welcome to this surprise uh, live English class. My name is Christian, I'm an English teacher and this is my channel Kangaroo English. Um, today is my third anniversary on, on YouTube. Three, three long years on, on, on YouTube. Um, and I remember, <laughs> hey Pete, nice to have you. <laughs> I remember when I started my channel, I said, okay, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have 1 million subscribers in, in 12 months. <laughs> yeah, that didn't, that didn't work out. <laughs> but, um, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy with, 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 with everything that I've done. It's, it's made me so much of a better teacher. Like when I, when I study to make, to make my videos, the things that I learn, I'm, I'm a much better English teacher because of, because of YouTube. Um, and the content. So, um, yeah, I, I, as of today, year three, my third anniversary, today I have 2 million video views and 40,000 subscribers. And it's, it's great. It's, it's, it's amazing for me because it means that there, I had two million opportunities to, to change people's idea about learning English. Two million opportunities to, to push for free education. Two million opportunities to, um, to maybe change someone's life. To, um, to give someone an idea about how to get that job or how to move to the country or maybe how to talk to that girl <laughs> that they always wanted to talk to. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's, uh, I'm basically, I want to say thanks to you because when I receive emails and comments from all of you, you know, such, such beautiful and kind comments, it's like, okay, Okay, I want to keep going. I want to do more. I want to do more. This is so it, it's because of all of you that um, that that I that I can do this. That I I, I make videos every day. Um, so there's 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 a, a couple of things I wanted to talk about before we start the uh, before we start the class. So the first thing is that. Um, I, I, I have sponsors on Patreon, people who sponsor free, you know, education. They, they sponsor me so I can make more videos. But until today, there was no reason to be a, a sponsor, really. There was, no, there was no motivation to be a sponsor. But from today, if you are my, my sponsor on, on Patreon, then... I am going to make exclusive content for, for my patrons. Now, you know that I believe in free education. Everything, every class that I make will always be free for everybody. But what I'm offering patrons is other things like behind the scenes. I'm offering um, funny you know, outtake videos, I'm offering um, f for those people who, who are, who are um, is it gold? Who are gold sponsors. We're going to have a, an opportunity to ask me questions directly. Um, so it's basically, if, if you're my sponsor on Patreon, there's, there's some extra things. Okay, you're going you're gonna to have sneak previews of my classes. Um, I just want to give you, I want to give you some, some extra motivation to become my, my patron because th there's two advantages to being a patron. One is, of course, that you are helping me to, um, to make content. But now, now the second reason is that you're going to see some things that nobody else will see. 
and I uploaded my first video on Patreon just now. So if you are one of my, my sponsors on Patreon, you can go now and look at the video. Um, and so every day I'm going to try to upload some, some exclusive content to, for my patrons. And I want to say thank you to, to all of those people as well. So thank you. Um, okay. Um, I should maybe talk a little bit about um, my, my, my training, <laughs> my, my running training. <laughs> on, on Saturday, so in five days, I have to run 10 kilometers. And secretly, secretly, I want to finish in 50 minutes. So I want to run five minute kilometers for 10 kilometers. Now, <laughs> I think it's going to be impossible, but I'm going to try. Um, let's see what happens. Um, I ran, I think, eight kilometers on Saturday and my legs are a bit sore. I'm not very fit. Man, that's bad. I've been skipping, but I don't think skipping helps very much. I don't know. I don't know. But all, <laughs> all of you have been very kind in giving me words of encouragement. You can do it, Christian. It's a mind game, <laughs> etc. <laughs> um, okay, so um, <laughs> now let me have a look at, um, at, at who, who's here in this, in this beautiful class. We have Pete from Aussie English. Pete is a great, um, a great YouTuber. He has an incredible podcast. You should check him out um, if you don't know him already. Um, Adrian from Argentina is here. Adrian. <laughs> um... Makabul Khan, Sadiq Paturian, Huckleberry Finn, Anus 07, Kat, Katarzyna, Lec, Katarzyna Lechkoshka, <laughs> Andrea Antonelli, Nassau Trust, Vlad Furs, Shapur Amrolai, uh -huh. um, uh, who else we got? Sabur Hamedi, um, Mo. Pablo Uribe, Latifia Suarez, Vladimir Bogdanov, Pablo Uribe, Sabud, uh, uh, Gosha, Oscar, Olga Labun, incredible, um, incredible uh, group of people from all over the world. Uh, okay, so let's let's start with a little activity about descriptions. Okay, if, 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 you're, if you're ready to start now, um, because, you know, I, I think that a great way to learn is just with, with games. You know, I, I love to play games, so it's more fun. So let's play a little game. So look at this. Um, okay, look at this picture. Okay, so you can see there are five people in various different positions, okay? So we have this guy here, right? And then we have this guy here and all these different... Now, imagine that you are the photographer. So you have to, you have to take this picture, okay? Now, I want you to give directions to the people. I want you to tell them how to, how to stand or to sit, but be specific, okay? Be very specific. So, let's, um, so we have uh, five, five guys, okay? So one, two, so he's number one. So this, this guy here is number one, okay? And this guy here is uh, number five, okay? From one to five. So let's, let's talk about how you can describe the position. Now remember, in English, when you <laughs> Yeah, they have no, they have no faces. <laughs> Hang on. They, ha they, they have no faces either. Actually, it's quite, 
Actually, the picture, I have to agree, the picture is quite terrifying. I mean, look at this. It's terrifying. It's not important. Okay. Um, so, I want you to give, <laughs> give orders. Now, remember, in English, when you give an order, it's really simple. You just use the infinitive. For example, sit, stand, turn, go, eat. Okay, it's easy. So, you just, infinitive is imperative. Infinitive is an order. Eat, go, da, da, da. Right? Okay, so, the first guy. The first guy. How can you, how can you give him an order? Okay, so this first guy, number one, number one, what would you, what would you say to him? <laughs> yeah, everybody is bald, like me. You see, look, see, it's the same, it's the same. I'm one of the guys. Okay, so this guy, no, not look at me directly, this guy here. This guy here. So, I want to, how can we describe this guy here? Okay, not, not, not these people, just this first guy, the first guy number one. Okay, okay, good. So you could say, okay, look to the left. Look to the left. Um, put your hand in your back and look at number five. Put your hand in your back. In your back? No. We say put your hands behind. Okay? Put, okay, so look, we have the order. Put, put your hands behind your back. Um, put your arms along your body. No, put your arms behind your back. Stand up with your hands crossed. I don't know if they're crossed. Put your hands behind your back. Look, look to the left. Okay. And... Another thing you could say for this guy here, okay, you could say that um, you can also use the verb face, okay? Face means to, to, to turn your face, right, to look in a direction. So I could say, okay, face left. Um, or another, another thing I could say is, I could say, um, give me a profile. Okay, so this is your profile. Straight on, profile. Give me a profile. Okay, this guy here, look, he's, he's looking, okay? And maybe I could say, <clears throat> stand up straight, <clears throat> stand up straight with your hands behind your back and face the left. Shoulders back, <clears throat> stand up straight. <laughs> um... And smile. Well, no, he's not. He's not smiling. He look. He has no face. My God. Okay, good. So, what about um, now? The verb. The verb face has has other meanings. Okay, when you face something, you know it means that you. 
you are um, you are confronting something, maybe a problem. You know, here's a here's a problem in my life. I face the problem. Or, you know, maybe if if my life is is very hard, I I I need to to face some difficulties. I have to face them. Or maybe in the football, your favorite football team has to face their opponent to win. Yes, or exactly, face the challenge, face your fears. Very good, uh, Bobakar and Anus. Uh, yes, and also you can meet someone online or you can meet someone face to face. Like, like, well, not like us, but I hope one day we can meet face to face. Uh, okay, Nadeska, agachate. Uh, in English, agacha. Uh, this would be to um, to crouch. Okay, there's a special verb, crouch. Crouch is to to get down, right? To get down like this. Yeah? Okay. Um, <laughs> and imagine if imagine if I throw I throw something at you, and you're like this. This, the, the verb is duck. Duck. Exactly like the animal. It's weird, right? So, if I if, um, imagine that there is an aeroplane. There's an aeroplane coming towards your head and I say, Oh, duck! Yeah. <laughs> or maybe it could be a duck. There could be a duck flying at you and you have to duck because of the duck? That's possible. <laughs> uh, I don't know, I don't know why it's called a duck. I don't know. Um, uh, okay. Um, yeah, you, 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 could, you could also say get down, but get down is more to, to lie on the floor. If I say get down, I, I want you to, you know, to to completely be flat on the floor. This is duck. Only your head, right? Duck. And crouch. Um, okay. Let's let's have a look at this guy. Okay, number four. This guy here. Can you describe number four? What, how is he? What's he doing? What what can we say to this guy? What can we say to this guy? Okay, so, okay, Rodrigo, sit, uh, Rodrigo says, sit in the, um, sit and relax, and look at me. Um, on the right, number five is a sitting guy with a left leg on his knee, and he's looking straight, hand crossed, arrogant guy, sitting rudely, like a king, sitting like a square. Um, sit formally. Okay, so, so basically he has his arms and his legs crossed. This is to cross your arms. Cross. Okay, so, and, and it's a verb. Okay, so I could say, cross your arms. Cross your arms. Cross your arms, or I could say, cross your legs. The same when you, you know, when you. <laughs> it's, it's very difficult to demonstrate crossing your legs when you're standing up. <clears throat> Although I could do the uh, the tree pose in yoga. <clears throat> huh? Ready? I'm I'm multi talented. Wait, wait. <clears throat> Look at this. Look at this yoga. Look at the stability. I'm a tree. <laughs> um, <clears throat> cross your arms and, and cross your legs. Um, yes, and of course, uh, great question, Sabrina. And the, the opposite would be uncross. I could say, 
Sabrina, uncross your arms, young lady. <laughs> it's very rude. Um, wow, and Gosha has combined two, two idioms here. It, it crossed his mind to cross his legs. Very nice. So this is when, when an idea, okay, it goes across your mind, okay? So what's the difference between to think of an idea and for an idea to cross your mind? Okay, so you think of an idea, it, it appears in your mind and you, you think it. But if something crosses your mind, it means you think it for a moment and then it crosses and then it disappears. So normally it's an idea or a thought that you don't, you don't continue, right? Like, mm, it, it crossed my mind to move to uh, Italy, but I didn't. An idea that, yeah, very good, very good. Um, exactly. <laughs> yes, maybe, maybe he, he is a bit like Sharon Stone, a bit provocative. Um, so, I, in, in English, we love to make words, they're called portmanteau words. Portmanteaus are where we take one part of a word and another part of a word and we join them together to make a new word. Like if you have the word marathon, for example, right? So marathon is the very famous running race. I think everybody knows about the marathon. You're running for, what is it, 42 kilometers, I think? <laughs> These people are crazy. <laughs> So, um, so, ah, uh, oh, okay, 42.2 kilometers. <laughs> okay, um, so a marathon. So, in English, what we do is we, we take this part of the word to make new words, right? A thon. And so, a marathon is very long, and it's very hard, it's very difficult. So, a marathon could be... A talkathon, right? Imagine. Imagine you are with uh, a, a, a friend, and your friend is like da 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 da, and you're and you're thinking, wow, this is a talkathon. It's like a marathon of talking. Or maybe if you have a lot of money, and you are in Dubai in a in a shopping center. It could be a shopathon. You know, just a, a marathon of shopping. <laughs> Evo Lira made a zeppathon. <laughs> a, a marathon of Led Zeppelin. <laughs> a zeppathon. I love it. That's, that's perfect. See, you've, you've invented a portmanteau word. That's great. You know, remember guys, part of enjoying language, part of using language is having fun and being creative, right? So, you know, that's great. I love it. A zepathon. <laughs> now, there's another portmanteau word, which is, which is this. Um, it's called... It's called Marathon because of the place in Greece called Marathon. Running. So, it doesn't mean anything. It's the name of a, of a place, right? Okay, so, um, so we have the word man, and then we have the word spread. Okay, spread. So we have this word in English, manspreading. And it's related to this, okay? It's related to this, to this. Now, manspreading can be a problem. And basically, man, so to, 
to spread means to, to like open wide. Okay, to open wide. So the problem is a man sitting in public transport, maybe sitting in a bus or on a train or on an aeroplane, and he doesn't sit like this. Okay, he's not, you know, he's not compact. He's not a compact little, you know, petite Japanese teenager. No, he's man spreading. He's like this on the, on the public transport. You know, with his legs, you know? This is man spreading. This is a big problem, right? A big problem. Um, and if you go to London now, there are signs that say no man spreading, right? No man spreading. Um, and there's another portmanteau word, which is this. It's called mansplaining, okay? So this is a combination of man and explaining. And so <laughs> mansplaining is when a man explains something to a woman in a very, um, okay, what's the word I'm looking for? In a, um, oh my God, I can't think of the word. <laughs> ah, ah, yes, in a condescending way. Condescending. Do you know this word? Condescending. A bit like, yeah, a bit macho. A bit like, I'm the man, you know, I know about everything and, and you're a woman and you don't, you know. Let, for example, let me explain how, how to drive a car. You don't know how to drive a car, you're a woman. You know, let, <laughs> let me explain how, um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. This, is, this is called man, mansplaining. So, right now, you know, to, if you're a man, two things. Don't manspread and don't mansplain. Okay, it's not, it's not good, okay? It's not good. <laughs> um, okay. So, okay, sorry, I kind of lost, um, I went... <laughs> so, okay, so Rodrigo has invented a new one. Trump splaining. <laughs> I, I I love that, right? So um, it's like when Donald Trump tries to explain things, and unfortunately he has no idea about what he's talking about. So it's Trump splaining. Um, okay. I I have a question. How many? Because I don't know if you are watching this at work. Or if you're watching this maybe on on public transport or you're watching it at home but a question how many of you have right now have a piece of paper and a pencil because the next part of the class you need some paper and a pencil do you do you have that can you um, can you get that for me uh, let me um, Okay, there we go. Okay. Okay, you do great. Okay, fantastic. Fantastic. I think a majority of you have, um, have, uh, have some paper and pencil. Okay, good. So, now, even if you don't have paper and pencil, no problems. No problems. It's not... You, you will still learn. Uh, trust me. So, step one. I need you to draw a five by five grid. How many of you understand that instruction? A five by five grid. Five by five grid. So the first word is grid. Okay, grid. Grid means squares. Okay. 
a series of squares. So, for example, um, uh, most European cities are not grids. Most European cities, the streets are like this, right? The streets are like this. But, but New York is a grid. Okay? New York is a grid. It's, it's squares. Every block is a square. Okay, this is a grid. Now, that's why the word for traffic jam in American English is gridlock. Gridlock, because the grids, the squares, the streets are completely locked with cars. Right? Wow. Okay. Gridlock. Okay, so uh, a five... Five by five grid would be this. Okay, so we have five. Uh, one, two, three, four, five by five. One, two, three, four, five. Five by five. A five by five grid. Okay, hang on, I have to um, put this person into a remove. Okay, there we go. Um, uh, okay. Uh, Saldi Lagua. Uh, just sorry, just one moment, guys. I'm trying to. Um, to this is a bit. Okay. Um, <laughs> so. Um, Yes, five by five grid. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going, I'm going to give you instructions to put things in this grid. And you have to follow the instructions, okay? So, um, uh huh. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, this is the first time that I've done this activity, so you know. This is new, it's new for me, but it, I think it's a fun activity. Uh, okay, so, um, so we, we're going to say that this is one, two, three, four, five, etc. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, okay. I, I, thought, I thought that I, I blocked this person, Saldi Lagua. I don't understand how this um, how this stupid app works because I can't click on anything. God damn it! Like seriously? I don't know. I don't know. There's there's it's not it's not working. I'm sorry. I can't block this person. Okay. So this is now. Okay. Now we can start. So in in square number two, in square number two. I want you to write tomorrow's date. So here, in this square, okay, in this square, I want you to write tomorrow's date. Hmm. Now remember, in English, dates always are written with ordinals. So uh, today's, uh, to, no, tomorrow's date. Uh, I don't know what is tomorrow's date. Uh, what what is tomorrow's date? I I don't know what the, the the date is today. I know it's Monday, but I don't know the date. Okay, exactly. Very good, very good uh, to um, very good to uh, Medina. To Medina and Sergio and Elda. Um, Okay, it's the 10th. Very important, the TH. Very important. Especially in pronunciation. In writing, well, not so much. Pro definitely, 10th. I want to see the tongue. 10th. Okay, 10th. Okay. Um, in square number four, in square number four, I want you to write your given names. Hmm. 
Who knows what their given names are? Because if you go to another country that speaks English, maybe they'll ask you for your given names. And you think, well, given? Right? Now, there's two things, right? There's your family name and your given names. Now, obviously, it, it depends on the country. Like, in, in Spain, you have your family name. You have one name from your mother and one name from your father. Um, to combine to create new family name, okay? And then you have maybe one or two given names, names that are given to you by your parents, one or two. But in Anglo-Saxon countries, it, um, it can be different. So, like, I have a family name, only one family name, okay, which is my dad's surname. Because when people get married in Anglo-Saxon countries, the woman takes the name of the man. Now, now not so much, but in the past, always, okay? Um, so I have my dad's surname. It's my family name. And my parents gave me, they gave me two given names. My first name is Christian, and I also have a middle name. <laughs> So my, my, my middle name is a name that I only use for official documents, for very formal situations. And my middle name is Stuart. What, what a lovely British middle name, Stuart. <laughs> um, so now some of you, yeah, you, you, maybe you have no middle name. Or maybe the family names work different. I, I remember when I was in, uh, in Bali, in Indonesia, the name, of my, the name of my tour guide, his name was um, Mate... Oh, I can't remember. Mate, Mate something, I think. Mate... Uh, Mate something, right? Mate something. And, and I said to him, wow... In, in Indonesia, your, your name is Mate? Like, what? Mate? And he said, no, no, no. Uh, mate is, is an Indonesian word. It means second born. Second born. It means his name was, I am the second child of my parents. Second. And then he had another name like Mate something. I can't remember. But everybody called him Mate. Like when he was walking in the street, eh, hey, Mate. When he was driving, eh, hey, Mate. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's so strange. Because, you know, everybody is first born or second born. Like, how can you distinguish between people? It's like, hey, first born, hey, second born, hey, third born. Weird. For me, it's weird. <laughs> uh, Pablo Urbe says, Mathematics. <laughs> Maybe that was his name, Mathematics. <laughs> so, wow. So, Shapur, there's a student here called Shapur. His name means the king's son. The son of the king. Wow. So your uh, Luch says that the middle name was your mother's maiden family name. No. So the maiden name is the name of your mother before she got married, right? Her original name, which was the name of her husband from before. So really, it's a mess. Um, uh, okay. Uh, okay, so let's continue. Sorry. I got, I got distracted. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, so, uh, first name in the... Um, okay, in square number four. In number four, you're given names. So, Christian. Christian. Uh, Stuart. Christian Stuart. Oh. <laughs> um, where are the Anglo-Saxons from? 
Uh, they're from Angles. I'm not, I'm not lying. They're from Angles and from Saxony. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, number six. Number six. Write down the color of your shoes. The color of your shoes, right? Now, my shoes are black, but, you know, because, because I am an advanced learner of English, I want to choose, I want to push myself, right? I want to, 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 to do something more with my, with my vocabulary. So, how can I, how can I, um, how can I add to black? So maybe I can say they are matte black. Matte black. Mm -hmm. Here. Matte black. You know, they're not shiny, they're matte. Or maybe I could also say that they are dull. Okay? They are a Dull, matte, black. So, dull means dull. Dull is the opposite of bright. So, this light, this light is very bright. Look. This light is like your future. It's very bright. <laughs> okay? But my shoes, my shoes are dull. They're not shiny, so they're dull, matte, black shoes. Ooh, wildfire, wildfire says pitch black. Very nice. Very nice. Let's look at some other colors. Okay, brown. What are some other, some other synonyms for brown? What about, um, depends what type of brown, right? Is it like mud brown? Is it like uh, maybe uh, leather brown, like a, maybe like a dirty brown? Light brown, dark brown, glossy, great. <laughs> James Apples is wearing sandals, like Jesus. <gasps> cool name, James Apples. James Apples in Jesus sandals. Black, uh, thongs, okay, Rodrigo's wearing thongs, nice. Okay, um, Ilias is wearing purple shoes, but maybe instead of purple, you could say violet or um, maybe sherbet, that's a great color, sherbet, or maybe um, like fuchsia, something like that, right? So try to be more, ooh, okay. Akmal Nabil says jet black. Gosha says coffee. See, that's, that's the creativity I'm talking about. Jet black, coffee colored shoes. <laughs> Poo brown, yes, yes, okay. Um, uh, sand brown, ginger, <laughs> ginger shoes, chocolate brown, exactly. Ochre, ochre, exactly, very nice. Uh, great, great, okay, good, good. Um, okay, next one. Um, in square number 14, 14, so 5, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, this square here, okay, here. I want you to write a number, okay? Okay, here we go. Here's the number, ready? 7,537. <laughs> did, you, did you get the number? Did you get the number? Let me repeat that. 7,537. Vieco... Amazing. Olga, almost. Shapo, almost. Um, uh, no, Olga, sorry. Olga, you were correct. Sorry. <laughs> yes, Anton, Flora. Um, I, I don't know how to read the Cyrillic. I'm sorry. Um, Vladimir, almost. Almost. Wow. You guys are very fast. Okay. 7,530, 37, 700, no, 7,537. Good, Pasquale. Okay. I think Rodrigo has the best answer. Almost 8,000. 
<laughs> more, more incredible creativity. So wh when I'm saying the number, you will see my, um, you will see my tongue. Okay, watch. 7,537. Do you see? 7,537. 7,537. Um, okay. Now... <laughs> Uh, okay, now let's let's start let's start doing something a bit more difficult. Okay, so um, I want you to just color. Uh, so this is, uh, this is seven, seven five three seven. Okay, seven thousand five hundred thirty. Now I want you to color this square. Okay, like this. There we go. Color. You could say color the square or. I could use a, um, a, a phrasal verb. I could say fill in. In, okay, because remember in because here we have a boundary, okay, we have a boundary and I want you to fill inside. I want you to fill in the square. Fill in, so it's filled in now, good. Okay, so now start here. Start here. Now, go right, one square, and then up one square. So, go right one square and go up one square. And then, in this square, draw a picture of a lamp. Hmm. Easy. Depends what kind of lamp you want to draw. You could draw a table lamp, or a floor lamp, or a ceiling lamp, or maybe a hurricane lamp. Mm. A hurricane lamp is the traditional, you know, the, um, they've got like a glass thing. Um, you should Google it. Hurricane lamp. Uh, a candle? Yeah, you could draw a lamp with a candle. So, one square to the right, one square up, draw a lamp. Maybe like, I'm gonna draw a... Okay, I drew, I drew a little lamp like the Pixar lamp. Ooh, it's true, Saldi. Saldi, you could draw a lava lamp. That's true, a lava lamp. Um, is, is a cool thing. I, I had a, 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 a lava lamp when I was younger. You know, it's very, it's hypnotic. <laughs> a chandelier. Wow. If you're very posh, you can draw a chandelier. How, how many watts? Um, I want you to draw a, a 30 watt LED energy saving lamp, which is the equivalent of, you know, 100 watts in an incandescent bulb. <laughs> Katarzyna said she thought we had to draw a lamb. Mm. So, let's have a look. Now, these two words are very similar, right? In pronunciation and spelling. Look, we have this one with the B and this one with the P at the end. But here's the difference, okay? So this B is silent. So when I finish the word, I finish, I finish on the M like this. Lamb. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My mouth, my mouth is closed. Lamb. But on the other word, okay? On the other word, I'm finishing with that really strong English consonant explosion. Lamp. Lamp. Okay, so you see my mouth is open at the end of this word. Lamp. And if I have some paper, you can, you can see the explosion. Look. Lamp. Lamp. You see? Physicality is important, right? <laughs> Silence of the lamps. <laughs> oh, man. You guys are so funny. Seriously. <laughs> Uh, okay, let's continue. So, um, uh, okay, 
Now, let's, let's, again, we're going to start on the black square, okay? So, I want you to go left three squares and go down one square and draw a comb. Look at my, look at my mouth. Comb. Hmm. Do you know what this object is? A comb. Wow, Flora Chana, AJ Shapur, uh, Rodrigo, uh, <laughs> amazing guys, amazing, uh, comb. Okay, so there's a difference between a comb and a brush. Now, I don't need combs or brushes, okay? <laughs> but the difference is that a comb, a comb is plastic, Okay, it's plastic, and it's just for, um, I don't know what it's for. And, and a brush, you know, a brush is, you know, has the, the, the things, right? And you, this is a brush. It's different. Yeah, it's different. Totally different. Um, and this is, this is how you spell the word, similar to lamb. So at the end of the word... My, um, my mouth is closed. Comb. Now, <laughs> let's, let's, let's talk about Donald Trump just one more time, okay? Now, Donald Trump has something called a comb over. A comb over. Because his hair, okay, he, he, has, he has hair here, okay, on the side. He has hair. And he gets his comb and he combs it over. Like this, see? So then now he has hair. He has a comb over. <laughs> now, let's not, you know, talk any more about his hair. I think everyone can agree he has the worst hair in the world. A comb over. Maybe, maybe one day I will, you know, have a comb over. I don't know, maybe. Why not? Uh, okay. Okay, um... <laughs> oh my god, this, this activity is really, um, really strange activity. Uh, okay. Okay, so, um, one, one, one final thing. Okay, one final thing. Which is, um, again, we're gonna start, we're gonna start at the square and Directly below, directly below the square, I want you to draw, I want you to draw scissors. 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 <laughs> I mean, even I, when, when I say the word, it's just, it's a ridiculous word, right? It's, it's a ridiculous word. Scissors. But again, you guys, you guys are incredible. You guys are incredible. I've heard, I've heard lots of different pronunciations of this word, but yes, the, 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 the pronunciation is scissors. Okay. And it's an example. It's an example of how important consonants are in English and how unimportant vowels. I mean, no. Mm -hmm. Basically, we don't, we don't say the vowels. The vowels disappear. Sissus. 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 I'm very sorry about the English language. Scissors, yeah, for cutting the hair. Again, I don't need scissors. Why, why is this activity about hair things? <laughs> it's, it's designed to make me feel inadequate. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so, yeah, listen, um, uh, time's up, guys. I have to go. I have to go and, um, hang on, there's a phone call here. Um, yeah, I have to go and prepare for the afternoon. Um, Recently, I have made a lot of abstract classes, but this week I'm going to go back 
and make some grammar classes. I'm going to make some classes about modal verbs and I'm going to make some classes about um, some other grammar things. So listen, don't forget guys that you can, you can see me on Instagram and on Facebook. You can send me emails. Tell me what you want. You say, hey teacher, I want to see a class about this or I want to see a class about this. Okay, that's, please, because, you know, that's why I'm here. I'm here to help you. Um, okay, so, I gotta go, but, um, yeah, I just wanted to say um, thank you very much. Check out the new Patreon page. Okay, check it out. Um, for those of you who are, who are my patrons, I'm uploading a new video there. Uh, every weekday, from Monday to Friday, you have a new video on, on Patreon. Um, and because it's my third anniversary, um, what, what I want to, I, I want to make more content. I want to see you guys all the time. If you, if you support me, I can make more content. Okay. Um, big love to you all. I'll see you soon. And, uh, yeah, um, hugs and kisses. Um, eternal love, um, peace on earth, everything. <laughs> Bye guys. Bye.